110 to 102. Alec Burks, 18 off the bench from downtown for three. Knots the game up with a minute to go. But Chicago's very next possession, Kobe White on the outside, puts the Bulls up by three, and they go on to win by eight. 110 to 102. Knicks now have lost five of their last six. From our Delta MSG studios, great to have you with us. Bill Pito along with Wally Zerbiak. Alan Hahn joins us from home. How is the view, Alan, from home? Just the same as it was probably in the studio. The back door was open. It's very cold in Chicago when you leave the back door open. That was a major issue tonight for the Knicks. Defense two games in a row. I must say, that Chicago uh, arena, United Center, whatever it's called now, it's, it's one of notoriously the coldest. So, you know, it's kind of tough to get going as a player a little bit. And the Knicks shooting was ice cold, especially from the three-point line. They could not get that one shot to go that they needed. You know, I'm going to think back to R.J. Barrett was solid in the third quarter. He had 10 big points. I think the Knicks were down one with two minutes to go in the game. They had a couple looks at three. R.J. was open from the corner, just hit the front rim. Then they were finally able to get that three to go by uh, Alec Burks that tied up the game. But then defensively, they just left Kobe White open. And Zach Levine, you know, he showed he's probably, you know, the man, the best player on the floor. He made uh, the shots when they needed him at the, down the stretch. Best player on the floor really should have been Julius Randle. I mean, in that matchup to watch, it should have been the matchup to watch. He and Larry Markkinen, what a matchup that was. And and Julius did all he could on, on one end just to balance it out because Markkinen, they didn't remember the couple, was it a couple of years ago when he just absolutely destroyed Kristaps Porzingis in a game? They went head-to-head -head and he did almost the same thing, just making threes, playing real physical, scoring 30 points, 23 in the first half. That, what a compelling matchup that was in this game. And Randall was, you know, had to keep up with him in some way, but it was Levine that was the closer. And for the Bulls, they've had a lot of heartbreaks this season. A lot of close games that they weren't able to close out, they finally did. But Julius had the numbers you know, that he's been putting up, the impressive numbers. But the turnovers, and, and at the worst time too, especially at the very end there, was a bigger issue as the double teams were coming, and they were coming from places that he just wasn't seeing them. And those spins weren't happening. But as you saw, he was trying to take it right to Markkinen as Markkinen was taking it to him just to make sure that balanced out. Markkinen's not a good defensive player, and Julius exploited him many times. But, but Wally, clearly as we're looking at offense, the issue for the Knicks was on the other end of the floor throughout this night. Even from the get-go, they just didn't seem to have that hop, that bounce. It was a back-to-back, -back, on the road, no excuses, of course. But you could just see this team didn't have the same effort and energy level they had against the Clippers. You know, one thing, guys, that would well, make life a lot easier is if they could just get some more threes made. Exactly. That's Six of 29 well, yeah. for downtown. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. They're, they're last in the league <laughs> at threes made per game at nine and a half. If they could just make a, maybe two or three more, right, Wall? I'm watching the emotions of the players. No, they were not good in the first half on defense. They gave up 56% shooting. They gave up a lot of back doors. They played their butts off in the fourth quarter on the defensive end of the yes. floor. Julius Randle is out there trying to do everything he can, rebound the basketball, be physical on defense. Then when he's at on offense, he's like, he's trying to get the ball to shooters. He's trying. He's like, will someone please make a jump yeah. shot? And then he's like, well, okay, that's the well thing. if no that's one's exactly making a jump thing, shot, Wally. then I got to barrel yeah. into the lane. I got to spin. I'm dealing with the seven-foot guy and Larry Markkinen, and then another defender's coming over there, and I'm stuck with the ball at the end of the shot clock because nobody can make a shot now, when I pass Randall, them the if ball. If you're Randall and the threes are consistently missed, do you then not yes. pass it out? As a player, you start looking around like, oh, man, I got, I got to do something here, and now I got to go tack well, one on I three. Think what, I mean, that's just what I he's think what forced you guys to are do saying. because nobody can open up the court for him. What you guys are saying is basically the margin for error is so thin because they don't have the three-point ball to yes. bail them out at times yes. or to help them keep up because other teams are making threes and they're making twos, and eventually that catches up with you. And I, that's what it is. The margin of error is so, so thin. I mean, again, defensively, you know, they ended up giving up 110 in this game, but for the most part, defensively, that first the, the first quarter was your issue, giving up 32, but they started getting it right defensively later in the game. Yes, exactly. But then, even when you were getting stops, you're down three, then you can't get, make an open shot, then they make it five. You're constantly trying to catch up because you don't have that three ball, that weapon that brings you back faster. Man. And that's the problem, is that every little mistake 
is magnified because you don't have that great equalizer, which is the three-point ball. They made multiple stops down the stretch of that game when it was a one-point game or it was tied, and they had shots to take the lead. They were getting – they were – compiling stops together they the bulls had no answer they were rebounding the basketball it seemed like carnage under the basket every time when the knicks got a rebound noel's coming out of all over the place blocking shots getting deflections randall's rebounding and then they just could not make a shot to kind of give themselves a little bit of breathing room to get the lead back to put the pressure back on the bulls and that's just something the knicks are going to have to learn how to do down the stretch of games they need to figure out a game plan for someone to make some plays to close out game. Now, guys, as good as Markin was, he didn't score a single point in the fourth quarter. Oh, Markin he was had, off. Markin I mean, he, finished, couldn't, he couldn't make a shot. He yeah, finished he the game fire. with 30, but Zach pass. Levine had 11 of his 21 in the fourth. That's what the big money guys do. I mean, Zach Levine, this is why I think he's an all-star, because he has the game down the stretch. He is a creator. He can create his own shot. He doesn't <laughs> need a pick and roll. He doesn't need to post up where a double team can take the ball out of his hands. He's the kind of guy that can off the dribble, can make a step back when there's two seconds on the shot clock. He can elevate over his defender, and he can make shots that win basketball games in the NBA. He was the difference maker. He didn't have to do anything at the beginning of the game because Markkinen was going off for 23 points in the first half. But, but then when the game got tight and they really need a basket, he was the difference maker in the fourth quarter. Yeah, worth pointing out, guys, that after White hit the three to put the Bulls up by three, Levine hit a three to put him up by six, and that was basically the ball.